Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening and welcome. It's Nurse Richard the Wax Wizard. Thanks for joining me. Now, this is a really interesting one, this. Uh, and I'm just going to show you above me here uh, what this ear that you're looking at now looks like after, um, after we've removed this. Now, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? And you're probably wondering what is going on there. Um, as was I, but I will explain that as the video goes on, what could be going on there. Um, like I said before, it's not. I, I can obviously have a, a very good idea uh, what's going on. It's not my job to formally diagnose these things, but I can certainly point uh, the specialist's uh, ear, ear, nose and throat um, in the right direction as to what I think is going on from what I know about the patient. Um, now, I've not seen this lady before, and she came to me um, with no, no, she had no pain in her ear at all. The only symptom she had was that um, she couldn't hear very well um, out, out of mostly this ear. We did the other one as well, but that was fairly straightforward. But it was when I was at this point here where you can just see underneath uh, this white, soggy, macerated, mushy skin underneath this plug. And that, when you see that, that always triggers alarm bells in your head because you're thinking, why, why is it like that? Now, it's often like that in these dead skin plugs, but especially when there's been a bit of uh, moisture there, what do you get? What causes moisture? Infections. Um, and just have a look at the size of this thing as well when it came out. It was massive, but it's just covered by this slimy, white, soggy skin. Now, if any of you have seen a lot of these videos before, <clears throat> yeah. excuse me, um, you'll know that it always pays to be curious. Um, when you can see some white soggy skin as you can still see in here some remnants yeah, and you're thinking awesome. what's underneath that um, could be an issue as there was as you've already seen um, now I've decided to start um, with what's left here just at the right edge of this because I don't want to go gung-ho in the middle of this I just want to gently peel it away from the side and to see if it does, because uh, I'm, I'm fully expecting at this point it to reveal something. And so you can see I'm just trying to get a grip there. I'm being ultra cautious, obviously, because it's um, it's delicate, this stuff. But you will see, and this is where the blood comes from. It's not because of anything I've done. Um, it's, it's kind of inevitable when you're pulling away something like this. Um, so we're just gently peeling it away from the side and it's coming away nicely. Um, but as we go, the really mushy bit just to the left hand side of where I am now, you will see just disappear uh, up the tube. And it's when that bit disappears, there you go, just gone now. When that bit disappears, can you see the little bit of blood at the bottom there? So obviously I stopped at that point. Just have a good old look to see what's going on. And obviously it's revealed this huge crater um, that's now bleeding. Um, it did bleed excessively. And like I said, I mean, you was watching it yourself, wasn't you? It wasn't because we bumped into the uh, air canal or touched something that we didn't with the tube. It's just, obviously, there's, um, as, soon as, as soon as the skin has been lifted off, it just opened up uh, a tiny little blood vessel, and that's what caused it to bleed a little bit. Um, but it, it didn't bleed much. Um, but I, I wasn't concerned about that. I was fully expecting it, to be honest with you. Um, but I still want to reveal the true extent of actually what is going on here. So what is going on here? Um, could be one of two or three things. Um, you can get this, I know, I know, I'm going to steal his analogy here because I think Neil describes these, uh, these conditions really well. It can be a top down one or a bottom up one. Um, now a bottom up one is where there's an issue on the floor of the ear canal with um, the, the circulation, the blood vessels. Now, if someone's got a condition that compromises them in any way, um, diabetes is a, a very common one, or any condition that ref restricts the blood flow. Look at this soggy white thing coming out. This reveals the true extent of it after this one comes out. Um, so when the blood flow is restricted, um, especially in the peripheral one, peripheral means the very outer blood vessels, the smallest ones, capillaries and, uh, and what have you. Uh, and if there's not enough blood getting there, there's not enough oxygen getting there. If tissues don't get enough oxygen, they die, basically. There's a long and short of it, so that, but that's happened from the bottom upwards. Top down is when there's a, something like a big skin plug, like you've just seen in there. We've pulled that out. Uh, and what that can do, uh, the big skin, it can start burying down into the floor of the ear canal uh, and causing craters like this. And that would be an ear canal cholesterol, which is quite rare. Um, do I think that's what this is? I think that's 
probably the most likely because I did ask her about her medical history, as I do with everybody, obviously. Um, if she had diabetes or any condition that she knows of that restricts her blood flow, uh, she wasn't aware of any. Um, I still have asked the doctor to, to, to look into that to make sure that she hasn't got any of those things because um, this might be the first sign that we know that uh, a blood flow is compromised. So we can't rule that out. Um, you can also have uh, necrotizing uh, outside externa, infection basically just breaks everything down. Um, you know, it is wet, soggy, so I suspect, and there's just a bit of discharge, I think, at the bottom of the air canal there. I'm not entertaining going down near the drum for that. I think this poor lady had been through enough without me uh, going down there. Um, so, I think the cholesteatoma is the most likely one, um, but I have asked the doctor to cover her with some, uh, some antibiotics just to um, rule out any infection causing this. And because it was so wet, and soggy, chances are there either has been or is um, some infection lingering, or lingering around in there as well. Uh, so obviously I've referred her as a matter of urgency uh, to the ear, nose and throat specialists. And I'm just gonna, you can see a little bit of white skin there, can't you? So I'm just gonna um, try and get that. This is also the fine end tube as the majority of this was done with and lift that up and What's interesting is you will see the floor of the ear canal where it where it actually was. So it, and it's quite extensive. Um, this crater here. And if you see me hovering around there, it's because I'm I'm trying to figure out where I need to go. Because it's 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 kind of hard to know whereabouts you are. Sometimes you know which 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 is bone, which is dead skin, which is the floor of the old ear canal as it was. Um, <clears throat> you can see the distance, can't you? Just to the left, that is definitely exposed bone um, in there. And just to the left of the tube now, you might see that this little flap of pink skin just like kind of lifting up and down. And that, that is where the floor of the ear canal was. So it's, it's buried deep down underneath that. So obviously I'm being ultra cautious. I mean, the main aim of a procedure like this, when you find something like this, is um, <clears throat> excuse me, is to, is to fix the symptom, obviously, and not being able to hear very well, which we, we did pretty quickly. And then anything else after that, after we can reveal as much of this as possible, um, it gives the ear, nose and throat a better idea. It, kind of ha it also helps to speed up the referral as well. If I send these, which I have done, send these videos and images off, and as soon as they see these, they'll um, obviously move it up the priorities of, uh, of things to see. Because obviously they, they, they're inundated at the moment, unfortunately, since COVID. Um, most hospital departments are inundated, trying to catch up. Uh, it's mostly due to there not being enough staff in them, unfortunately. They're working as hard as they can, there's just not enough of them. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but it really helps. <clears throat> when I send letters and videos and, and uh, pictures of things that are potentially serious um, because it helps them to um, so a triage and triage is mean you're trying to figure out which, which of all the referrals that you've got which one do you need to see more urgently um, so it, it, it certainly helps them with the triage and I know I've had, had lots of messages from them in the past thanking them for uh, sending uh, the images and the, the letters that I do it does help to get them seen a little quicker which is great and I will keep you posted on this one just uh, it, whenever I hear something from the lady I have asked her to keep me updated <coughs> excuse me now, this was the uh, the other ear which wasn't much of a problem at all you'll see it's nice and clean afterwards but there obviously was still a little bit that needed to go just got that first bit there and, and uh, you know, I, I, I used this ear actually to, to, to show her the difference between what, what a normal ear should look like uh, and obviously she'd already seen an abnormal ear so she was um, she was reassured when she went you know when I explained what might happen obviously more than likely they'll, they'll get her in pretty quickly uh, possibly do a scan a CT scan just to make sure um, to, to see to have a look at what we can't see you know under, underneath there and behind all these structures to see what else is going on so there you can see Pretty healthy ear can have a little scar on the eardrum, that's not significant. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found that interesting. 
like I said, I will keep you updated on that. Uh, when I hear something, I will let you guys know. Uh, but for now, take care of yourself and I'll see you soon. Ta-da.